Right, good afternoon, Guy. Good afternoon, Tate. How are you? I'm very well. You're looking remarkably relaxed. Is that relaxation or tiredness? Uh, tiredness. Oh, oh right, yeah. okay. I've got a flickering eyelid, which is always a Have you? sign of tiredness. Ah, oh, that's wretched. Yeah. I hate that. It goes on for days. Right, I'm that's because your work ethic is so commendable, is it not? Yes, a little crazy at the moment, but... Uh, the rice is on the table. Right, so uh, where are you off to today? Uh, today um, we are off to Bath University to give a little uh, talk to the students who are studying songwriting about your songwriting over the past 18 years. Um, and as you approach Bath, what are your thoughts on songwriting? What have you been thinking about songwriting lately? Um, songwriting, I think I'm going, um, I'm experiencing a vault of fuss um, in my approach to songwriting, which it did start actually last year, two years ago when I started studying poetry with uh, Samantha Nayadu. And, um, it was more about um, truthful experiences and being able to write about them and not being uh, sort of swayed by a certain style of songwriting or trying to attain a certain type of song and just being naturally like flow and not worry about the consequences. If you are leaving here, do remember to make sure you take everything with you before we leave the train. Oh, we've just been joined by Neil, ladies and gentlemen. We're stations to Oxford. With He's coming on to do this thing, but I'm going to leave this running. Also for Banbury, Leamington Spa, Coventry, Birmingham. And everywhere else in the Midlands. York, oh. Newcastle, Edinburgh Waverley. Newcastle? Yeah. Ember Keating, Kirkcaldy, Dundee, and stations Good to Aberdeen. Those connections available by changing here <clears> and also wow. on. I can go anywhere from here. So, do you think that this poetry helped you to find your own voice or to become more confident in your own voice? Yes, exactly. That's what it was all about. And uh, it's still that journey still happening, but the more and more I listen to artists like Joni Mitchell, Bruce Springsteen, um, uh, Bob Dylan, um, they, they, they uh, even though on the surface it, it sounds like a an incredible piece of, of art and, um, and almost fantasy, but really, if you approach it from that point of view, I think they're, they're really writing from a quite a personal point of view, and then once they add the melody and the chords, then you get this great work of art. Uh, has your songwriting of late reflected that change? Um, it has, but because I'm working with you, currently I'm heavily into harmony, so the words have left me for the moment, but it's definitely on the forefront of my mind. And once we get a little more time, then the words will be uh, coming back. Do you think the poetry studies have informed your composition? Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's made it a little, little, it's made it more open, less rigid, and, um, more, and the music becomes more lyrical as well. Right. And... Um, are there any artists that you didn't get before that you understand better now? Would you include Johnny Mitchell and people like that in that category? Or? Joni, I've always, I've always got Joni, but um, Bruce listening to Darkness on the Edge of Town, that's, that's definitely one where um, some of the sonic emotion doesn't really sit with me, but what you, you can hear striving for inner truth absolutely and right. that's completely amazing what do you mean by sonic emotion um some of the some of the sounds that, that some of it jars for me it's just a personal choice right but you know I'm, I'm i'm open i'm open enough i'm man enough to say i can see where and what it's coming from without being dismissive of it okay right so, why did you mention darkness on the edge of town? Um, because that's in our world at the moment, and it's, it's uh, I think, um, the, the, the Alan Yentob Imagine series, of which he took um, 
the documentary and, and chopped it into a one-hour special was a great eye-opener and great for anyone who's interested in songwriting to go and look at that and see what an artist is going through to uh, attain this, this the truth and um, that's very important and something that seems to be just sometimes modern music I'm not really hearing that much it's really rare for me to hear that these days um, there's a few artists sorry to hear what in modern music that sort of um, that, that great writing you know going back to these great sort of four or five artists who have mentioned and if I thought about it I could mention more um, the guy out of the Arctic Monkeys is a great lyricist. Um, All right, you use the word great there. Yeah. What do you mean by great? Um, this um, unshackled um, ability to write free. Okay. Free, freestyle, interesting, personal. Um, it it's, seems to be quite rare, unless I'm, I'm not listening to huge amounts of new music lately, I hear the odd thing, but it just seems to be quite rare, and, and actually if that sort of person does arrive in the public eye, they usually jumped on and revered, you know. What, for telling the truth? Um, yeah, sort of going that one level deeper, further into lyricism, lyrical, lyric writing, the, yeah, the truth, um, and that's something you don't hear much. And is that what you're pursuing in your songwriting? Yes. And that's why these the same names come round, you know, Morrissey, um, Leonard Cohen, Bob Dylan, Joni Mitchell, um, Bruce Springsteen. They just really sum something absolutely amazing up, which is kind of lost in the, uh, the modern media nonsense of pursuit of fame and it suggests a certain kind of courage doesn't it yeah yeah but then it can against the time. then it can seem really mysterious why do you think that is I mean for me um, I certainly came into songwriting thinking that it was all about love mm. because all of my favorite songs were love songs mm. and um, people like Johnny and Bob always mystified me because I couldn't understand how they could work that miracle mm. of writing songs like that. I mean, how do you write a song like um, Idiot Wind or Hissing of the Sun and Lawns? Mm. I think you need do you have any idea how you do that? No, but working with you, working with Samantha, um, listening, reading, and making a conscious um, a conscious decision that it isn't mystical and magic, you can find out where it comes from and attempt it yourself. Right. Um, that's the, that's the, uh, the stubborn want in me to be able to win and I think and that's the thing I'm searching for and it is, it, it, I think you're able to do it but it comes naturally to some people at certain times in their lives. Well, I think it's, um, it's um, got something to do with learning how to write without affectation, hasn't it? Exactly. You know, about Free. writing in your own voice and yeah. not being ashamed of your own voice. Yeah, um, so it requires certain courage. And, uh, Here's Neil. And some inner, inner, inner esteem. Okay, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to Guy Davis on songwriting.